the magnetic force on the charred carriers in a moving conductor creates or induces an electric field inside the conductor. So now that we've established what the induced electric field is, let's find the potential difference between the charges in this conductor moving in the magnetic field. Because this induced electric field means that there is a difference in potential between various points along the electric field. Let's suppose that this conductor has a length, and we'll indicate the length in this diagram. So it has a length L. We know from what we've just shown that there is an electric field that is induced in this conductor moving in this uniform magnetic field. And the magnitude of the electric field is equal to the product of the conductor's speed in the magnetic field and the magnitude of the magnetic field. The direction of this electric field is straight downward. So let's use this to find the potential difference between the top edge of this conductor and the bottom edge, because that's where the charge separation is. We will evaluate this from the low potential. The low potential occurs where the negative charges are to high potential, L. Now remember, potential difference is related to the electric field. The potential difference is equal to minus the line integral of the electric field. Now remember the line integral is just the dot product of the electric field and a displacement vector. That displacement vector is in the direction of the line of integration. We are integrating from the low potential side to the high potential side. So this will take place across the length of the conductor from zero to L. So in integrating this, let's remind ourselves of the path that we're taking to integrate. Again, we are going straight up. So here is our path, straight up. Let's look at a tiny representative element on this path. So a tiny representative element right here, we will call this element DL. DL is in the direction of our path of integration. And for every DL, we're going to have its dot product with the electric field. Now the electric field is pointing downward and is uniform within this conductor. So here's a representation of the electric field pointing downward. Well, we could use this to represent the dot product between the two as being equal to the magnitude of the electric field times the cosine of the angle between the electric field and our displacement vector along the line of integration and the magnitude of our displacement vector. Now notice this angle between the displacement vector and the electric field. The angle between the two is 180 degrees. And you know that the cosine of 180 degrees is equal to minus one. So this means that the potential difference is equal to minus times the minus one, this is a positive, times the integral from zero to L, the magnitude of the electric field, DL. Well, the electric field is uniform, so we could pull that outside of the integral, and we have the integral of EL evaluated from zero to L, or the potential difference is equal to the product of the electric field and the length of the conductor. Now, remember, the electric field, we said, is the product of the speed at which the conductor is moving and the magnitude of the electric field. 
So this means that the potential difference that is induced in this conductor moving in this uniform magnetic field is equal to the product of the speed of the conductor, the magnitude of the magnetic field, and the length of the conductor. This result is pretty amazing because it says that when we have a conductor moving in a uniform magnetic field, that that motion generates an electric field. And that induced electric field in turn induces an electric potential difference. And that potential difference is across the length of the conductor. And we call that potential difference motional EMF. Motional because it occurs only when this conductor is moving. Let's summarize this result. The motion of a conductor through a magnetic field induces a potential difference between the ends of the conductor. This induced potential difference is called motional EMF. And this motional EMF is equal to the product of the conductor's speed in the magnetic field, the length of the conductor that is, and that length is taken to be the length perpendicular to the direction of motion of the conductor, and the magnitude of the magnetic field.